Okay, we we're told we have two functions, big F of t, and its derivative is going to be little f of t. Now little f of t's graph is shown here. So, so there's no confusion here. This is little f of t's graph in the picture. All right, we're told the y-intercept for big F all right, is going to be at 6. So that's kind of like a starting position or initial value. Sometimes we want to think of that as. And then we want to figure out what is going to be f of 2, big F of 2 and big F of 7. So to do that, what we want to do is kind of calculate some areas underneath curves. All right, so it's always from the derivatives graph to the x-axis. So the first area we really care about is at 2, right? This first triangle, that's our t value, I guess, in this case, of 2. All right, so the area there can be calculated as 1 half base times height. So 1 half, the base is 2, and the height is going to be 1, right? We're thinking about the area of a triangle. Well, that works out to be 1. I'm just going to put it on the inside here. The next area we care about, oh, well, now we can answer our question. Let's do that. So f of 2, the starting position was at 6, and it's increasing by 1 unit. All right, so because of that area, so it's going to end up big F of 2 works out to be 7. All right, what about F of 7? Well, for F of 7, we know we start at 6 also, but then we may increase or decrease by some amount. We have to get all the way over to 7 and do all these computations along the way to calculate the area between the derivatives graph that we're given and the x-axis, or I guess um, t-axis in this case. So we've already done the first one. Let's jump over to this next triangle that goes from 2 to 5. So the base there would be 3, and the height is still going to be 1, so the area of that triangle can be 1 half base times height. So that's 3 halves, or 1.5. All right, because both of those triangles are above the x-axis, they're added. So we can add 1, and we can add 1.5. But we aren't to 7 yet, so we still have to make our way over to 7. The next one I'm going to look at goes between 5 and 6. All right, uh, 1 half, base is 1, height is 1, or maybe you want to think that as negative 1. All right, this works out to be 1 half, or 0.5, but in our calculation, that's going to be below the x-axis. That's going to be negative, so negative 1 half or negative 0.5. All right, one last it looks like a it looks like a rectangle it's really a square with base and height both being one so one times one makes one for the area of that and that gets subtracted away because it's below the x-axis all right so as we take a look at this doing all of our computations it looks like big f of seven works out to be seven as well all right because you have 1.5, but you subtract away 1.5 also. All right, so we really just have the computation 6 plus 1 makes 7. All right, hope this helps out as we're trying to start understanding um, the relationship between derivative graphs, the area underneath them, connecting with um, their antiderivatives, I guess you can say, is what big F of t would be named. Good luck.